In this video, we will discuss the London equations. They are a set of two equations which describe the relation between a current in a superconductor and the electromagnetic fields in and around it. The London equations were first formulated in 1935 by the German physicists Fritz and Heinz London. For a usual conductor, we can use Ohm's law to make a connection between the current J and the electric field E. In the simplest case, both vectors are parallel and the proportionality constant is called the conductivity sigma. However, things change when we consider superconductors. In that case, the relationship between the current and the electric and magnetic fields are given by the first and second London equations. Here, ns is interpreted as a number density of superconducting electrons, e is the electron charge and m is the electron mass. Note that the London equations cannot be derived, rather cleverly motivated. Let's go over two possible ways to arrive at the London equations. First, we use classical mechanics. Since superconducting electrons move without any resistance through the material, we can imagine them as free particles under the influence of a uniform electric field which pushes the electrons in some direction. Considering Newton's second law as well as the Lorentz force, we can write the time derivative of m times v as equal to minus e times e. Since the current is defined as charge times number density times velocity, the first London equation follows from this. And by taking the curl of this equation, as well as one of Maxwell's equations, we get the second London equation. However, this calculation is not rigorous since we cannot assume a uniform electric field for our case. The second way works by considering quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, a coupling to electromagnetic fields can be implemented by doing a so-called minimal substitution. That is, we replace the momentum that equals m times v with p plus ea, where a is the vector potential. We now assume that the ground state of the system has no momentum. Therefore, we can write the current density j in terms of a. Now, taking the time derivative leads to the first London equation, whereas taking the curl leads to the second one. The downside here is that we cannot, in general, assume that the wave function of the system keeps its ground state property of no momentum. A big achievement of the London equations is that they predict the Meissner effect, which describes the expulsion of a magnetic field from the inside of a superconductor. To see how this works, we take the second London equation and substitute the current using one of Maxwell's equations. Now we have the curl of the curl of the magnetic field being proportional to the magnetic field itself. Since the divergence of B is zero, we can simplify the left-hand side and arrive at the second derivative of B being proportional to B. This proportionality factor is written as one over lambda squared, where lambda has dimensions of length. And indeed, if we assume a simple case and write down the solution to this equation, we see that lambda appears as some sort of characteristic length, called the London penetration length. This tells us that the magnetic field is exponentially suppressed inside a superconductor, which is the Meissner effect. By the way, typical values for lambda are somewhere between 50 and 500 nanometers. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.